Well, if you don't already know how to use it, now is the time to master the curves adjustment in Photoshop or Lightroom Classic. Hey everybody, my name is Austin James Jackson. I'm a landscape photographer based here in the beautiful Southern Utah area. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys everything that you need to know in order to use the curves adjustment on your landscape photos. Now this is going to help you to take your photos to the next level if you don't already use the curves layer, or even if you do, uh, I'm gonna show you some stuff that you might not know today that's gonna help you to really really enhance your photos. Curves is such a powerful adjustment, allowing you to adjust not only the luminosity of your photo, but also the colors, allows you to set the white balance, and there's so many different things that you can do with a curves layer. I'm gonna be showing you guys all of it today. I'm gonna be showing you in Photoshop. Now there is a few features that are unique to Photoshop, but for the most part, a curve is a curve and it's gonna work the same in Lightroom. So I'm gonna be showing you guys all of that in today's video. So now I'm gonna be doing this tutorial in Photoshop, but if you aren't a Photoshop user, uh, most of this is gonna translate well to Lightroom. There's a few more features in Photoshop that I did wanna talk about, but for the most part, the curve itself is going to work really similar in Lightroom. So when you're in Photoshop, you can bring up your curves adjustment by going to your adjustment layers down here, and you're simply going to hit curves and let that open up. Now you can adjust the sizes here so you can see the whole curve, which is important and now you have this. So now there's a lot of things going on here. When you open it up, you're probably gonna be on this option here. It's gonna look like this. First things first, we need to explain what the curve is. Now, if you use levels, um, levels does a similar thing as curves, but curves has a lot more adjustability. So curves is a lot better in my opinion. You should definitely be using curves. Now, the way this works is this is basically like a graph. So anything uh, closer to the left side of the image is darker, anything closer to the right is brighter. And these are just the pixel readouts essentially. So you can see that there is a lot of pixels in this tonal range right here. You can see by how far it's stacked up. There's not a lot of bright pixels, but there is a concentration. You can see here this tiny little line. There is a little bit of concentration of pixels on the very brightest, which would be like up here. So you have to understand exactly what that means. So basically by adjusting the line here, we can adjust the brightness of the pixels. So if I go and I grab on the bottom of the line and I adjust this, uh, you can see the whole curve is moving, but it's not really affecting the very top end, these very bright pixels. It's really mostly just affecting the darkest ones. And you can see when I toggle that, that is true, the bright pixels aren't getting adjusted at all, just everything else is. So there's a lot of different ways you can adjust this here, a lot of different people doing a lot of different things. I wanna talk about these tools on the side first because you might be looking at them wondering what the heck is going on, you're confused. Uh, let's go from the bottom up because the bottom stuff you don't really use, so let's just get it out of the way. Right here you've got this tool which allows you to create a more accurate histogram, something that I don't really use because it doesn't really matter how accurate it is per se. Um, I don't really mess with that at all. Um, then we have this, the smooth the curves values. I don't use that either. Um, you've got the pencil draw to modify the curve. Don't use that either. The pencil just uh, switches between the pencil and then the little line dot thing. You wanna use this right here because that's gonna allow you to draw dots on here to make adjustments. Now we've also got three eyedropper tools to set a white point, a gray point, and a black point. You can certainly use this on your images if you want. Sometimes I use it on mine, sometimes I don't. Now what this is gonna do is by setting the white point, the gray point, or the black point is you're going to not only set the tonality, you're also gonna set the white balance in the image. One thing a lot of people don't know is curves is more than just the RGB lightness values. You can actually go through and you can adjust the reds, you can adjust the greens, you can adjust the blues. And obviously like people might be saying, well, what about yellow or whatever? And so you just have to go into the blue if you want yellow and reduce the blue. That's gonna add yellow. It's just like a temperature or tint slider. That's how that works. I usually don't play with any of these three. If I do, it's on very select photos where I'm trying to like warm the highlights or cool the shadows or something. Um, so you wanna go back to RGB, but do know that those will change if you do use these eyedroppers. I'll show you how to use the eyedroppers in case you do wanna give them a go. So to set the white point, you wanna select a spot in your image that's completely white with no color cast to it. So in this image, like I wouldn't wanna select here because it's gonna make the image a little bit too bright. However, I could select right up here in the sun where 
it is completely light colored. And you can see it's not even doing anything when I select that because it's already completely white and it's completely neutral tone. So if I went like over here, you can see it would brighten things up. It would also make things a little more blue. You can see it's neutralizing that color up there. And now you can see we have a blue, a green, and a red line. That is essentially just telling you that the red, the green, and the blue have been adjusted to meet the needs of this photo. This is a good way to neutralize your photo. Now you are probably seeing that because we're in the shadows, the blues are too strong. I could go in and adjust that, um, but I'm not going to. I'm actually not going to use this tool on this photo, but I did want to show you guys. And of course the opposite, you can use the black point to set something that's totally dark, which on this photo would be like in here. Um, but it's making it a little too dark for this particular photo. But I do always like to have one spot in my image that's either completely black or completely white. It gives me a nice tonal range. This is a good way to do that if you don't wanna do it manually. All right, now that we have that all out of the way, we can actually get into the fun stuff here. So when you go to adjust the curve, you're gonna leave the preset on default unless you create your own preset. I don't know anyone that does do that, but if you do, then you can find it there. Um, and you're gonna leave it on RGB because we want to just adjust the tonality rather than the colors in the image. Now you can click auto if you want. I don't really like the results of what auto usually does. You can see it just brighten things. Uh, there is actually a way people don't really know about that you can go in and you can actually hold down alt and option and click auto and then it will give you the option of what algorithm you wanna use. So you could use one of these algorithms in order to perfectly like light your scene. But like I said, I don't use auto, but it is there if you don't want to do this yourself. I think there's a lot of opportunity to do it yourself, so it's really fun. Now what you're gonna see most commonly in landscape photography is called the S curve. Now the S curve darkens the darkest pixels and brightens the brighter pixels, essentially just adding contrast, but you can do this in a lot more customizable way than just a simple contrast slider. So to do an S curve, usually I start on this bottom 25%. So just imagine this grid is splitting things into 25% with anything uh, in this left column here um, is going to be your darkest photos. Anything in the right column is gonna be your brightest photos. Anything in between is going to be something between the brightest and the darkest. So I like to grab on this 25% column here, just like that, bring that down. And then I'll usually drag up here and bring that up. Now you can totally customize this. It's important. One mistake that I see a lot of my clients making when they're coming out of my workshops and I'm showing them how to use this curves tool is they'll wanna adjust it and they'll go and click again and they'll make another point. If you're gonna adjust it, you have to click back on the same point. And especially for landscape photography, you don't want too many points going on because you can see things can get pretty crazy pretty quickly. This can be beneficial for other things like graphic design or some weird um, like portrait type photos or stuff with backgrounds. But for landscape photography, you don't wanna do that. So make sure that you have, you can see the difference here. I have this like bullseye here telling me I'm going to be creating a new point versus when I hover over my point, I have the arrows. So you wanna have the arrows and then you can adjust this as you see fit. Now, if you wanna darken or rather brighten the darks, you can bring that up, but we do wanna create an S curve. Now, one thing, um, I'm doing the S curve on most of my images here and notice as I drag this on the right side, notice how that snow in the foreground and the sun in the background really pop. So I gotta get, to do, get it to a spot where I want. Now, one thing that I really like to do on images of mine is actually go in and adjust and bring up the very darkest spots just a hair because I don't want things to be so dark. So I want to talk about these little sliders here, which you're not going to use a lot, but essentially what these sliders do when you slide them is it moves the furthest right or the furthest left most point. So like the dark point or the bright point. Now you're going to see if you slide the brights one, it's going to make that bright spot even brighter which can be good, but I don't want it to be so blown out like this. Um, I'm gonna leave that one as is, and then this makes a dark point even darker. You can see it only slides it left to right. I do wanna show you a special trick that I use here um, on the input and the output, which is I like to slide this up just a hair. Now, if you go too far, you can see we get this like weird monochrome look that is way too far. I usually like to slide the blacks till the output is between like one and five and sometimes a little bit more. Now you can see the difference here. This was before and this is after. So the change is really, really slight, um, but you can even use this to like pull down those darks even more 
and then bring this up. So that's basically just kind of like recovering those dark details, making it so things aren't quite so dark. You can see I'm at nine right now. Normally I wouldn't go this high, but just for the sake of this example here, I am up all the way at nine. So you can see it a little bit better and we can maybe brighten that as well. And I'm actually gonna go down on this, it's too, too high for me. We can bring this curve up if we want to kind of make the effect less abrupt here at the bottom. We can bring it up to like here and just like that. So you can see with one curves layer, we've already done so much for this image. Um, you can also, if you want to stop the whites from getting too crazy, you can drag this down. You do want to be careful when you do that though. Um, because you don't want any kind of like ghosting or stuff like that where it's really bright. So don't drag this one down very far, just a hair. So you can see how much this one adjustment has literally done for a photo. Like I went from having this photo that looks pretty raw to this, which like honestly, I could probably save this and pass this for an edit. Of course, there is a few more things that I want to do, but you can see the power of the curves. The other really cool thing is that you can use the curves with a layer mask. So you can combine this if you know how to use luminosity masking or if you just want to use a brush and paint on here, you can do so much. Now, once you do this at this point, if you wanted to go adjust the colors, you could do that in here. Um, you can do things like add like warm tones to the highlights and cool tones to the shadows. Uh, there's really like unlimited possibilities with what you can do here and you can try creating a little S curve with the colors as well. That'll give you like some interesting tones on your photo. I know a lot of photographers use this to like maintain a consistent style through their edits. I personally am not a fan, so I am not going to use this, but it is an option. That is the way that a lot of photographers are creating like constant tones where you'll see a photographer where their colors always look the same every photo. They're using something like this usually. So you can go through, adjust these if you want. Otherwise, I think there's probably better ways to adjust the color in your image and not using the curves. The other thing you do need to keep in mind is when you add contrast with the curves here, a lot of times it'll bring up the saturation of things in your photo. So do be aware of that. Be aware of any, you wouldn't want any more contrast up here in the sun. You can see how it looks really nice, at least I think so right now. If you did much more contrast, that sun is just gonna be way too overpowering. So be really careful when you do that. Uh, and of course, like I said, you can use this in Lightroom. It works pretty much the same. You might not have some of these tools on the side, but the curve works uh, pretty much the same in Lightroom. Well, there you have it. You can see just how powerful this curves adjustment is. There's so many different things that you can do with it. It's something that I'm using on literally every single photo, a lot of times combining it with things like luminosity masks or even creating my own masks with a brush. You got to learn how to use the curves tool if you want to really help to level up your photo game. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. If not, let me know if this video is helpful. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe so I can continue to make these free videos for you guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.